STEM is a course that introduces students to basic, open-ended problem solving using the engineering design process. All the major published versions of the design process agree that the first step is always identification of a particular problem, which is exactly where the course begins. What is engineering? This is the first problem that STEM students face in the course. <laughs> engineering is the use of science and math to solve practical problems. Actually, in Mr. Henriquez's class, it means using anything you can find to get the job done. Prayer is helpful. <laughs> Most students get the definition of engineering, but they have no idea what they actually do. Like, what is a ceramic engineer do? What is a health and safety engineer? Who hires industrial engineers? How many different types of engineering disciplines are there? I didn't know what engineering was when I was coming in down. I mean, who really knew? I knew I was good at math, I knew I was good at chemistry, I heard chemical engineers did all of that, and they made a ton of money, so I blindly chose it. Once a problem is identified, students are encouraged to engage in secondary research to better understand the problem and any possible work that has been done to address it and or its constraints. For this particular problem, students choose a unique ABET approved engineering discipline and characterize collegiate offerings, tuition rates, salary ranges, active employers, and current projects within the field. Add on the presentation helped me build and maintain the, my oracy skills and helped me increase my communication level with my peers. And something that I've always been taught across my entire life is that teaching is the ultimate sign of mastery. So by learning about mechanical engineering, I was able to not only teach the class about it, but I also became an expert on it. And by hearing other experts' presentations on it, my classmates, it truly helped me learn about how diverse engineering is. The Engineering Fields presentation, as this project is called, further explores the design process by weighing constraints, in our case a rubric, brainstorming potential solutions to the problem at hand, and selecting an approach. To truly understand an engineering discipline, one must not only know what they do, but do what they do. As freshmen who are beginning to learn what we offer at Tech, I want them to explore our course offerings and be able to communicate how courses can contribute to someone interested in pursuing the field. Since brainstorming is an effective part of the design process, because it generates lucrative ideas and promotes applications, all students are required to critically think and propose an applicable surf or makerspace project that creatively addresses a problem related to the field. In the engineering fields presentation, students are instructed to combine two major aspects, one being critical thinking and the other being teaching. So in terms of critical thinking, students are supposed to create makerspace projects that are relative to their engineering fields as like ideas that they might be able to carry out in the future. So this is like pretty fascinating considering there's about 300 students at the year taking this course and each of them has their own unique idea. So there's 300, more than 300 ideas that can be applied to society as of today. And that's something that is really incredible. Personally, I did chemical engineering and my makerspace project was to create a spray that's kind of like an aerosol spray, but environmentally friendly, so that it could remove like the stench from old and smelly shoes. And the second part of the engineering first presentation was to teach students about the courses available here at Tech for students very, uh, interested in all kinds of engineering fields. So we would learn about the specific college courses that we would get credits for or maybe even CTE courses and it allows students to understand what is available for them at this school for the next four years. STEM students are also introduced to open-ended problem solving through progressive mechanical, electrical, computer, and civil engineering applications. At the start of the course, I have to assume that not many students had much building, coding, robotics experience. Sure, they've probably toyed around with Lego robotics in the past, but how many of them have actually used a robotic system to solve practical problems or even do challenging competitions? STEM students are expected to use the Tetrix robotics platform and CC++ based coding to build a fully automated robot that can compete in a high speed time race where an object must be transported to a precise location. The progressive problems and tasks are systematically developed to build on previous knowledge and developed skills. Drilling activities take place throughout the term and are introduced as relevant tools to aid in achieving specific goals. One of the first problems I ran into when I first started this course was building a basic robot that will move forward or function, like basic stuff. Online research helped a lot. Fast forward to the final project, I was able to combine speed, precision, accuracy, and functional transportation in one task. We started with a simple robot and then used gears to make it faster than the motors were capable of going alone. 
Then we learned about compound gear transmission systems to exponentially increase top speed so that we could race outside. Along the way, we practiced a couple different ways of controlling distance and program iterations using for loops, while loops, and encoder limits. Applications like the Mars rover need to be fully automated even if the control signal is lost. If NASA can design automated robots that are, say, trying to find water on a big rocky and unfamiliar terrain, why can't we do that here in this class? Similar to industry, STEM students work in collaborative groups for all robotics and building projects. Students are able to use their strengths to better the team effort and divide tasks for efficiency. In STEM, we have groups made up of like three students and we have to help each other out in order to get to a final product. So in my opinion, my strength would be communication. So usually whenever um, I tell someone like to do something or I'm listening to them, I realize sometimes like we don't like properly communicate to each other so we may not understand what like the other person really wants us to do. So like I usually try to bridge that gap. To effectively collaborate and communicate with each other, we also use technology and various resources. Adding on to Jackie, listening is very important because since we're all working on different type of projects, like Jackie and Nicholas are working on the Nadler bot and I'm working on the bridge, so it's important for us to communicate with each other and listen to each other's ideas and also listen to directions because without listening to directions, we don't know what's going on, so it's effective. So um, usually Mr. Henriquez gives us like a little bit of like a hint when we're like, working. So if we listen to directions well, we can like pick up on that and it gives us like a head start. Also in my opinion, a big trait you have to have in STEM is work ethic because the assignments are really tough. And if you don't have like good knowledge of robotics and engineering beforehand, you need to like make the time to make sure you stay back after school. Because the projects are tough and you're like, you're working, like you have to get have good time management. and. If you fall behind, then it's going to be really tough to get back. And like, in order to do good in the class, you must like work hard and stay on task. Stay on task. As a group, we all have different schedules and we're all busy. So it's important for us to, even though we're busy with after school or, um, curriculars, we have to come to STEM and like put in some time for academics. And it's important for communication, like Jackie said, because if we just like have a weird, like we don't communicate with each other and the lack of um, just communication, then it's not good for us. And it's good for, it's important for me to listen to other people and know when they're busy so I don't have to intrude on them or like know when we can come after school for things like that. So what do students think were the hardest obstacles that they needed to overcome when problem solving? One of the biggest problems we faced was planning. Most groups tended to build the robots very fast and they had to go back and fix everything. And if we had planned before, we could have had a more efficient way of getting the grade that we wanted. One of the biggest problems that we had, and other groups too, was breaking sensitive materials. For example, well, we broke our on and off switch almost immediately. Many groups pulled on wires and ended up ripping them out of their terminals. One group even cut into their wiring by accident and shortened their battery, and it lit on fire. We learned how to rewire switches strip wires, crimp terminals, and create parallel circuits. I'm used to the teacher giving us new materials when things break in school, so this was initially scary. Now I feel pretty confident that I could fix the wiring on my mom's broken coffee maker. One of the biggest challenges we've had to overcome was time. There's not enough of it. If I had more time, I would have been able to come with better solutions to the tasks that we had. And knowing what I know now, I would have been able to do things much more efficiently than I had before. It was very easy for the students to copy each other on their designs. This usually doesn't work out all that well. There are many different reasons for this, and some of the more common ones include the way that they code or the use of their materials. Some of the more uncommon ones could even include the amount of dust on the wheels. All STEM students need to communicate and collaborate effectively if they hope to manage all of their projects successfully. Promoting group brainstorming, weighing constraints, and open-ended solution development are a great way of bolstering creativity and critical thinking for the design process. None of this will flow unless efforts are made to improve communication and efficient instruction. One of the most difficult things that I have to deal with are the questions. Specifically those questions students ask on stuff we just went over. It's almost as if they're just not paying attention or maybe they lost their notes or maybe their notes didn't even work if they had any. 
So I'm a big fan of flipping the classroom. I like to make videos to help with our communication. Sometimes it'll be something as simple as a screen grab with my microphone here if I'm demonstrating CAD work. Other times it could be a video of me doing a problem on the whiteboard, like a gear ratio question or a review, um, as I would in class. Sometimes it could be a document camera grab. Um, students like this because if they're just not quite getting it or if they have a small question, they can answer it for themselves at home instead of waiting a whole weekend to come in and talk to me. Other times students have been absent and they didn't see any of this at all, and this is the first time they're looking at it, it gives them a chance to really review that information and get caught up before they come and see me. These video resources are great because students can not only use them at home, they can use them in the classroom as well. That's important because when I have a classroom full of 34 students, there's only a limited amount of time that you can spend with each student before the bell rings and class is over. It's a great way of students uh, finding that clarification they need without necessarily having to grab me, especially when it's something simple.